In this video, you will learn how to create an advanced waterfall chart that includes intermediate and split bars. Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now. This is a follow-up of the previous video I made where I went over two different methods to create a basic waterfall chart. And today I'm going to expand upon that and show you how to create this advanced waterfall chart that has these split bars that can be for both the total columns or these intermediate change bars as well. So this is something that you're going to have to use a stack column chart. You can't use Excel's handy built-in waterfall chart. So um, as I said in my first video, 90% or plus of your um, waterfall needs can be accomplished by doing the insert and then choosing this waterfall chart option that's a, a standard Excel water, uh, chart option. But if you need to do something more advanced where you want to show some intermediate splits with your totals or if you want to show how your incremental bars are split into two if this could be for maybe a one-time item that you want to highlight or if you're talking about a forecast forecast variance or whatever it could be that would require you to do just a little bit more detailed waterfall than this video is for you i'll walk through how to create this how you can update it and then um, you know take this and be able to have this template built out so whenever you do get waterfall requests that it's not starting from scratch each time you at least have a, a base template to work from so with all that said and if this is what you're you're looking to accomplish i'm just going to do some quick walkthroughs of how it works and then i'll talk about some of the logic i have built and then we can um, update as as we go so this is the the data table i'm working from this is a stack column chart so it's actually going to have three stacked columns on top of each other. And so what I have is my category names, which this can be whatever you want it to be. And then I've just bolded my, my total columns here. So I have three, a beginning, a year to date, and then an ending value. And then I have three intermediate changes to get to the year to date, and then two uh, intermediate changes before I get to the end of the year. And so what I have is a base and a bottom. So that base value is going to be if there's a, a mid I'm calling this the mid, which is this intermediate split bar here, this 25. We're going to have a column designated for that to work on that logic. Then we're going to have a bottom, which is basically going to be used to do our waterfall. So it's going to go up or down based on logic. And then the mid column here, that is just if we want to split, I'm calling that a, a mid split. Absolute value, that's just our, our change. And then the change is the, the change value. So anything in blue font is a, a manual input. And then anything on black is a formula. So start is always going to be a hard code of whatever you're, you're building your waterfall base from. So that could be 225. It could be 150, whatever you're, you're starting from. And then the bottom, unfortunately, I, it took me a long time to get this logic worked out. And I there might be a more efficient way, but this is what I've... Uh, came to as far as getting the, the bottom if there is a, a mid section here. So if there's no mid, you can see that the base is the bottom and the base are the same. But if we do want to have an intermediate split there, then there needs to be additional logic. So what I have written out here, you can grab this, pause, um, plug this into your, your model. But basically, I'm just looking to see if one, if if there is a number in this mid section that I need to adjust for it, if not, then I'm not adjusting for it. Then the mid that can be a zero or it can be a value. Then the absolute value column here is just going to look and see if there is a, a mid. If there is, then we're going to take our change minus the mid. Otherwise, we'll just take the absolute value of our change. That's just to get the the bars to be correct. So if it's a, a negative value, we don't want it under the X axis here. So you have to do absolute value changes for a column chart on a waterfall. So that's the first row. And then after that, the base, um, we have logic here. So that's just looking to see if the change is negative or not. And see so another formula, it's pretty long. I'll let you grab it if you want it. But basically we're going to adjust our, our base here to make sure that if there is an intermediate so I have the 75, I can change that to be 10, or I can just completely get rid of it. We want that base and bottom to adjust accordingly. So it, 
unfortunately it is pretty involved just getting the logic to work out but there's the formula for the base and then the bottom again is that long formula once you get that once you can just drag it down and then the same with the base so it takes a little time to get this set up but once you do like i said you can have this template available and just create new waterfall charts as as you get requests coming your way and so you can either have a mid or not it's it's up to you so we have a mid in there and then there's our absolute value formula that's another drag down and then our change the change is going to be the total value of the bar so whether or not you have a a split or not you always want to keep that this change column to be the full amount of the the waterfall bar that you want to to showcase so that can obviously change and so and then the color can can be changed as well so i'm not going to walk through the rest of it because it is of this table but that is the exact same logic just get those formulas drag them down and then if you don't want to and then if you're having an intermediate bar here you can see i don't have any change value in there so just keep that blank and then it'll not show so that's how to kind of distinguish your your endpoint, or if you want to have a, a midpoint or two, you could do it that way. So that's that's how I set up the table. But let's just go ahead and just get rid of this chart, and let's just show you how to make this from scratch. So go ahead and just highlight that. If you've got that built out, go ahead and highlight that table. We'll go up to Insert, and then we're going to go to Charts, and then we're going to go to our 2D column up here, and we want to do this second one, which is the Stack Column Chart, and then we'll blow that up so we can see it better okay and so you can see like i said that we have to do that absolute value so you can see right here for this negative 80 we have a, a bar that's below zero which we that's never going to work in a waterfall so we're going to go up here to chart design and then we're going to go to select data and so we're going to go ahead and unselect that change we're going to keep our mid we're going to keep our absolute value and then we're going to remove our base and then click OK. OK, so that looks all above zero. We can work with this. And so unfortunately, this isn't as clean as our default basic waterfall where we can just say, oh, this is a total or not, or this is an increase or decrease, it, it, and it adjusts, it adjusts accordingly. So. What what Excel has built out as far as their standard waterfall chart makes this super useful. Unfortunately, if you want to get a little more advanced, it's it's more of a, a manual exercise. So in this instance, we have these dark orange. So we can go ahead and select those, bring up control one to bring up our format data series. And in order to get these to, to kind of work the same is you can select your color. So we have that dark blue is kind of our, our basis for our, our totals. And then unfortunately, you're going to have to go into each one of these and go to the fill and then go no fill and so double click and just manually remove your total. So if you change your your, your rows here and you want to add or change which one is a, a total, it, it is always going to be a, a manual exercise. So that's just one point to, to call out. It's, it is unfortunately a little tedious. But that is, so that's the first step is just getting that taken care of. And so after you've done that, this gives a good way of just kind of seeing, okay, we removed our intermediate bases because those are never going to be part of the waterfall. And you can see how there's no like gaps or uh, between each one of these buckets, they all flow nice. So there's no gaps in between these. So that's how we know the logic's working. If If there was like, if this gray bar maybe started at 200 and there was just this gap or no man's land here, then you know that you're missing something in your logic. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually just get rid of some of these gaps we have in between our, our bars because it the, it's quite wide. So just go ahead and select your, your blue ones and do the control one to bring up the dialog box. And I'm just going to go ahead and knock that gap with down to 25% just so we can kind of read this better. And so this first bar this 2022 net income we're going to bold everything get rid of our legend we know that that is our starting point so and we we have a mid value in there so we want this gray to to mean something 
And then the next one we have a mid value until, and then the third one, this decreased travel, we do not have a mid value. So you can see that there's no gray area. But with these mid values, I think it makes sense to kind of have those kind of be consistent with whatever bar they're, they're associated with. So again, this is something that would be more of a, a manual uh, update, but you could do a solid fill. We could keep it the same color that we had with their intermediate bars and maybe make it like a 75% transparency just so it, it stands out. That's one way to do it. And then what we also could do is we could add a border to the, the bars that we had. So go ahead and reselect our totals here and maybe blow up that to like 1.25. So that's going to add a border to these base bars. And then we can add that same border to our mid. So we'll do a solid line. 1.25 that way it, it it still looks like one solid bar but it is split between this dark blue and then whatever this maybe this one time 2022 net income item that we want to kind of call out here and then unfortunately it, it does that for the bars that we do not want to show so just again a lot of manual updates it'll become second nature if you do a lot of these and then let's say that this is volume. This is an increase. We want this to be green. So let's go ahead and just solid fill. Let's do our green for all of our, this is the absolute value column. And then we want to add a border to that as well. Do the same thing we did with our totals. There's that. And then we want to change this, just this one. So double click this one. And then again, you'd have to unfortunately this is just going to be a manual process, um, but just want to show like that's that's how you go about it. So I'm not going to do it for all of them. And then this one's a green, so that's good. But this one is a, a decrease. This is our negative 80. So let's go ahead and double click that. Let's change the color. Just want to do this one time so we can so you can see how to how to do this yourself if you need to update this. And then we'll do the red and we'll do the red. Okay. So that all is looks good. You can see the values all stack up and then we have a decrease and then it ends where we want it to. Let's just, we want to add a intermediate bar to, to this one. You can see it's defaulting to that blue, but the intermediate bar is there. Let's get rid of that. So the next thing you can do is you can add some data labels. Um, let's highlight our, our series here. And then we do the plus sign. We can add data labels more options and then we're going to do value from cells and this is where you can pick up your change column to get if it's a negative or not okay and then it go back to our options here and let's just unselect that value and show leader lines and we can go ahead and just bold all those so that's we pick up our negative 80 that way and then this is another thing that you're going to have to to move these if so let's say this 25 becomes a negative 25. It's still above it, so you'd have to move it and change the color. So that's where, if you don't have to make a waterfall chart like this, then and you can get a buy with the basic built-in waterfall chart that is standard with Excel, then definitely do it. Uh, but otherwise, this is how I've found to be the really the only way to, to make your charts work and be 100% dynamic um, as far as the number flow go is to do a stack column like I have here. I'm going to go ahead and remove these grid lines, change that chart title to advanced waterfall. And then some another formatting thing we can add our data labels to our base here. We can do it individually or you can we'll just do it individually. So then add a plus sign, data labels, inside base. Let's do that. And unfortunately it makes it like almost unreadable. It's down at the very bottom in like a dark font. So we'll go ahead and change that to be something that we can actually see. Do that. And then let's do the same thing over here. Let's do inside in actually. I think that'll look better. And then let's double click this inside in. And then double click this inside in. So there's our data labels for 
I mean, and then the last thing is we'll add data labels for our midsection. So we'll go plus data labels, more options, value from sales, grab our mid column here, and then click OK, get rid of the value and show leader lines, bold those. And so this is really starting to take shape as far as what we want it to look like. And then it's another formatting thing I like to do. Again, it takes a little bit of time, but you can actually um, add some effects to your, your bars to make them kind of stand out more. Um, this is something I would do. You do, if you want, um, go to effects and then do the shadow. And I think the the shadow offset left looks good. So you can see this one. I have it. The other ones I don't. Be go through manually do that with each one of them. So let me just recap what we have here. We have stack column charts. We have three stack column charts. We have this this base, this mid, and this absolute value. And then we have the logic that I pointed out just to, to say if it's a, there's a midpoint, then we need to update the bottom. Otherwise, we can just use our base to look at the change column. Then we have an absolute value column that we're pulling into our, our chart because if it's negative value, if it's negative 80, it's going to be down here and it won't make a lot of sense. So unfortunately, you've got to do a couple different steps here, but this is the end result of getting to a advanced waterfall chart that has the splits for totals or intermediate. I mean, you can, we can get rid of all of these and it looks back to our basic. But if you, if you want to have the, that advanced look and be able to have some splits, then this is what I found to be the only real way to do that. So I hope you found this helpful. I know it was a lot, but I, th I think this is probably the only way that you can go about doing this um, and still make it fairly efficient process. So you know, going forward, this isn't going to be too hard for me to update if I need to add a, a column or adjust some values. I, I've got it built out here, the structure where I can update this template pretty easily going forward. So I um, just want to say that I do have this template that includes this advanced waterfall chart along with a basic waterfall chart available link in the description on my Etsy page. So if this interests you and you don't want to go through the steps of creating yourself, I do have available for purchase. Otherwise, I think you're equipped now to be able to create this yourself. Thank you for watching and God bless.